Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. Now in today's video I am going to be doing something very very exciting. I am going to be playing around with all of the new fall releases that I was able to pick up. Well actually I have picked up so many products I could not fit them all in today's video so I decided to maybe go ahead and do some more full face videos in the future with these products but for today's video I really wanted to have a look into all of the new makeup that I've been trying out during the past two months you know I just always hold back like releasing these videos because I really want to get a proper feel for the products before I'm doing a review so I've been really trying these products out for a good amount of time but they are still all brand new they are new releases by some really really cool brands I mean the lineup for fall was explosive. So some of the brands that I'm going to be featuring in today's lineup are no stranger to my channel. I think there was only one brand new brand in my video but everything else should be familiar to you guys. So I've got so many new cool releases. I've got some Jade Iodale, Lawless, Airy Paris, Fit Glow, Tower 28, Lisa Aldrich and so much more. There were so many cool makeup releases happening this season. Like it's almost overwhelming. So I really try to be selective with what I picked up. And also I do want to mention that of course all of these products are cruelty free and most of them are vegan too. Just always double check because sometimes I forget to check. But yeah, I kind of think that most of these products are vegan as well. And also if you have tried out any of these brand new releases, do drop me a comment below. What are your thoughts? Are you agreeing? Are you disagreeing? Did you guys have a different experience or did you guys have the same experience? I'm always really intrigued to know your opinion on these products as well. And if you find this video helpful in any way, why not also give it a big thumbs up? That would be very much appreciated. But yeah, you guys, I don't want to bore you with too much of an intro because we have quite a lot of new releases to go through. And some of these releases were really, really intriguing to me. So I would say, without no further ado, let's just go barefaced and let's play around with this beautiful new fall makeup of 2022. So I'm barefaced right now and I've actually picked up a brand new released primer. So let's actually start off with that one. So this is the Glowish by Huda Beauty Blur Gem and this retails for $33. So quite frankly, I did not really plan on picking up a new primer because recently I found some primers that worked really, really well for me. And also I have never tried out anything by Huda Beauty. So this was the very first product I've ever picked up by them. And this was really, really intriguing to me because it's called Blur Jam. Now you guys may know I really do love a good blurring primer. So my main critique is, is this going to be blurring if it's called Blur Jam. This was really a product that I was genuinely intrigued by because also of the ingredients. It's a really innovative formula, a really innovative texture, and I've never tried out a primer like that. So on the website, they are claiming that it's instantly smoothing, mattifying and breathable, and it's silicone free. And that was really intriguing to me because I do have a lot of foundations that are silicone free and some of those work really well when combined with silicone free primers. Sometimes if you have a silicone based primer and then you go on top of it with a silicone free foundation, you know, things may not work out as planned. So I was really intrigued because I thought this might be a very useful product in my collection. So another couple of claims are it's jam packed with skin loving ingredients. We'll get to that. All day hydration and 12 hour pore blurring power. 90% naturally derived formula. Strawberry color primer blends in clear on all skin tones. So although this has a little bit of like a reddish coloring, you won't see that. It's literally going on really clear, like transparent. It's vegan friendly, non comedogenic, fragrance free, alcohol free. In the beginning, I thought this would also be oil free, but you know, there is one oil and it's really at the bottom of the ingredients list. So I don't think there's a lot of it in here, which is the PG40 hydrogenated castor oil. I'm not a big fan of that, but everything else in this formula looks really really good so we have the cactus extract we also have some rose flower water so we also have turmeric root extract 
we have cocoa extract. This ingredient list looks really lovely. So here is the product. It comes in this little cute jar with this frosted sort of packaging. And it also comes with this tiny spatula. So you can actually take the product out of the jar with this. So once you open up the jar, there is this little seal in here and it's this really, really cool sort of texture. It's like a really thick gel texture, quite unique. I've got to say, I've never come across a product like this. But yeah, I'm going to clip back my hair and we'll apply it on one half of my face and then you can see how far this is pushing the blurring. And also you don't really need that much product. I always just take a little bit like that. And it's like this thick gel. It's literally like just such a weird texture. <laughs> It's really fascinating, honestly. I'm a huge texture fan and this really did not disappoint. Also, when this goes onto the face, it has this cooling effect. It's so smoothing. It feels really, really nice on your skin when you apply it. I really like that. I mean, the result, you can tell, it's really, really hydrating. Like, I feel like this is such a hydrating, more mattifying, blurring primer, but above all, it's so smoothing. Like, the smoothing effect of this is honestly amazing. I feel like my foundation applies much better when I use this, and I also feel like this is doing something that the foundation will last longer on your skin. And I really realized that, you know. I feel like it's not the most blurring primer for my pores right here. But it definitely gives me like a really smooth surface to work on. I really thought, you know, it would do a little bit more in terms of blurring, but the effect is kind of subtle. But you can tell it's, it's a lot better than this side. It is doing something, but it's not the most blurring primer I've ever tried, but it's lovely. I love the texture. I like the experience of this and I really just love the effect it gives me. So you just kind of want to rub this in and then you kind of also want to wait a little bit for it to work. All right, you guys, so let's actually move on to today's foundation. Now, this is not a brand new release, but it was definitely released, I think, about three months ago, max. And I picked it up and then I realized, man, I can't review this. This is completely the wrong color. So I got a shade mismatch again. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation and this retails for $58. This used to be their Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. This shade was also way too light for me. I had this in the shade Shell, but I also really enjoyed this foundation. It was super dewy but it was pretty, you know, you could powder this down and it did not look like dewy anymore. And I was actually quite a fan of this foundation. I do think that they are replacing this foundation with the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So this foundation has been out for a hot minute. I would say like two months max maybe. And for some reason, I just have to accept the fact that there is no shade match for me. Usually I'm a light to medium with neutral, leaning, cool undertones. And that was too much to ask of Hourglass to actually deliver. Because I feel like their light to medium selection in the shade range is really a mess. So in total there are 32 shades, which is not bad. And it's really a good selection, but the undertones are just completely off. If you pick up a neutral undertone, it's going to lean really, really yellow. And if you pick up a cool undertone, it's just leaning super peachy. Now, I rather have a little bit more peachiness than like yellow in my foundation. So I ended up picking up, now guess what? There is no light to medium with cool undertones. They, for some bizarre reason, have like three different neutral undertones. I have to end up mixing two shades together basically a light shade and a medium shade to get the light to medium shade, which is a little bit annoying. That's why I kind of held back to review this foundation because I just couldn't figure out how to actually have a shade that would match me. So another thing is that the light to medium shades lean kind of dark in shade tone and value. 
And then like the light shades, they make me look kind of ghosty. But let's actually have a look at what they are claiming about this foundation here. So they are saying it's a weightless liquid foundation that delivers 16 hour medium buildable coverage with a natural soft glow finish. The fluid texture is easily blendable and delivers a second skin finish for a complexion that looks seamless and lit from within. I'm going to show you all of the different shades that I actually had. Basically, I gave two of them away because they had this neutral undertone that leaned super yellow and did not work for me whatsoever. But I actually managed to film a swatch with all of the shades. So from left to right, this is the shade 4.5, light with cool undertones. Then we have the shade 5, which is a light with neutral undertones. And this is the shade 6.5, light medium with neutral undertones. And this is the shade 9.5, medium with cool undertones. So I'm going to take the shade 4.5, which is the light with cool undertone shade, and I'm going to use that as a base. I'm basically squeezing out maybe three pumps. And then I actually mix this up a little bit with the shade 9. I literally just take one tiny pump of this, you know, just that much should suffice. We're going to get into the details. I'm going to apply this foundation on one half of my face and show you the result that I achieved. So I'm just using a little bit to start off with. So straight off the bat, you can see that this will give you a good amount of coverage with little product. It's definitely a medium coverage straight away, but you can also build it up, which we are going to do. But I just want you guys to see the difference. I mean, it is definitely blurring. It almost feels like weightless on your skin. You really can't feel this, you know. It has a little bit of like a runniness to it, but it's not completely liquidy. It does have a little bit of a cream texture still to it. So you can tell straight away, it's going to give you a good, decent amount of coverage. Now it's not going to cover up everything straight away. You do have to build that up. And this also sets down. It's not going to stay like wet on your skin, which I love. And it's not drying too quick. So you can actually, you know, modify it a little bit and play around with it. So let's actually apply the rest of the foundation. So this is literally with the first layer of the product. I'm going to leave my eyes a little bit like bare because I do want to apply a concealer. So I don't want to fiddle around too much with the coverage level on my under eye right now. But, you know, if you see how this looks with only one layer with a little bit of product, I mean, I still have so much product left on here so much so we can definitely build this one up but just the way this sets on your face i feel like this looks at least on my skin it looks like a second skin i really like it so yeah let's do actually a second layer of the foundation I still have a little bit left so I feel like I could go in a little bit more on here really nice I've got to say I mean I heard some mixed reviews on the foundation my personal experience is I mean it looks good my only issue was the shade range so I'm a little bit mad that I have to buy like two different shades in order to get this shade right here but it looks pretty you know it's kind of a beautiful finish and I like it. It also wears great. It's not like uh, breaking up after a couple of hours. So when I used it with the Vanish primer, it did get a little bit oily on me after a couple of hours. I would say after five hours, I could see that this part right here was, you know, a little bit like breaking up on me and also on my chin. But ever since I used the Blur Jam, this foundation works so well. And also another thing is like, I don't feel like uh, powdering this foundation, which is a very rare thing to say because it's self setting. It's just, it does not require a lot of 
powder. I'm still going to be using some powder, but let's actually move on from the foundation to a brand new concealer that I picked up. So this is the Airy Paris Lychee Cream Corrector and this retails for $30. So basically when I saw that Airy Paris dropped a new sort of concealer product, I was very intrigued and I really wanted to try it, but I'm so shocked at their shade range. This is a very like minimal shade range and I feel like the shades are lacking. They've been really behind in terms of shade range super behind and every time they're dropping a new product i'm like praying that they kind of extend their shade range and they always say that they are working on it but they're not doing anything <laughs> i mean it's just really frustrating you know they might add like one or two shades somewhere sometime but you know even their oat milk foundation only comes in eight shades and that is just it's just not cool i basically picked up the correct shade right away i picked up the shade tree which is described as a bisque shade now that does not tell me a lot if i think about bisque i do think about something a little bit more neutral leaning cool so here is the product let's actually have a look what this is don't be fooled by this name corrector i'm not sure why they are calling it that but it's not really a color corrector in the traditional sense on here they're saying full coverage creamy formula and then you look at the bullet points and it says medium coverage Anyway, medium coverage, hydrating, multitasking, brightening. So they're also saying this is ultra creamy, creaseless, liquid corrector to brighten and illuminate your complexion. I mean, I picked it up straight away. I was really intrigued. It comes with this nozzle kind of squeeze tube. This is how much product I would use. And I'm just going to literally put it on my under eye right here. It's creamy more liquidy. I mean, the Annika concealer definitely did crease on my under eye. This really does not. It's liquidy and it's really creamy in formula. It's super hydrating. And the way I like to blend this out is actually with a sponge. So you can see it is quite luminous. It is a little bit more glowy, a little bit more emollient than my foundation. But it's really good for your under eyes, you know. It's actually really lovely. I honestly prefer this though a billion times over this milk makeup, this new concealer. I also use this on my face. It does have a decent amount of coverage. I would say it has medium coverage. I wouldn't go to the extent and say this is a full coverage concealer. Definitely not. Because also of the texture, it's just not a full coverage concealer. Let's be clear on that one. But I used this on top of the Quinoa Water Foundation by Airy Paris. And it's actually beautiful. It's really nice. You can put this on your face in case you don't use any foundation. You just want something to quickly correct it. It's a really pretty product. I feel like it's doing a really good job for my under eyes. Does not remind me of any other concealer, to be honest. So in that sense, it's quite a unique product. And, you know, if you're up for it, I'm just so bummed out by this shade range. The shade range by Airy Paris is abysmal. So let's actually powder my face down, although I feel like I don't really need powder today. Wow, that is something that is very rare. So I also don't have a brand new released powder. So I kind of got to go in with a powder, which is a little bit newer, but... I don't like this one. So this is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder by House Labs and this retails for $38. So yeah, I actually did review this powder in my House Labs review. It's not great. I'm not happy with most of the products that I got by House Labs apart from the bronzer. It reminds me so much of the Hourglass powder and that is also a powder that I don't get the hype. I really don't get it. This is a perfect occasion to use this powder because it's not strong, you know? So in that sense, it's good because I can use it today since my foundation isn't that glowy or anything. So I'm just gonna set my under eye with this a little bit. I definitely do need to set this concealer though. So 
So the powder works fine on top of this foundation. If you do wear anything that is dewier than this foundation and you do want to mattify your foundation or just set it, it's not great. <laughs> I would not spend that money anymore on this kind of powder. I don't think this is a good powder. <laughs> Sorry, house labs. I mean, I love Lady Gaga, but I just want to be honest that I don't really like this powder. This is just not it. Also, I just applied a little bit of my favorite Lila B eye primer, the Virtuous Veal Concealer and Eye Primer. I can't believe that Lila B is going out of business by the end of this year. What? Like, I'm shook. I freaking love this eye primer. I do definitely want to make a video about Lila B now because I cannot believe that, you know, one of my favorite products that I use every day, every time I'm putting on makeup, I'm using this as an eye primer. I cannot believe that they are going out of business, that they are closing their doors. This is so sad. It's really sad because I really love their products. And yeah, I just wanted to have mentioned that on the side. Let me know if you want some Lila B recommendations. So my base is on. So let's actually move on to the complexion color products. And today they are all going to be cream products. So let's actually kick it off with a fantastic newly released cream bronzer. So this is the Jane Iredale Glow Time Bronzer Stick and this retails for $38. So Jane Iredale actually has released her cream bronzers. She also came out with new cream blushes. Now I did not pick those ones up but I'm really really intrigued. I might pick one up. This formula is amazing. Here is the bronzer. It's a bronzing stick and they actually have this in three different shades. I have the shade Sizzle and I think that's the lightest shade. And just look at that. Since I got this, I can't stop putting this down. This is so good. What an amazing, amazing product this is. This is so beautiful. The cream formula, stunning. I really love this. This is like one of my favorite cream bronzers I've ever tried. This is so damn good. I'm so happy I got this. And the shade Sizzle, it's just this beautiful, perfect, neutral shade. So Sizzle is actually described as a golden bronze ideal for light to medium skin tones. Don't think this is too golden. Honestly, this is pretty neutral. I'm literally taking my Real Techniques 200 brush and I'm going straight from the stick onto my face. That is how this one works the best, honestly. It's so beautiful. I, I love this. <laughs> I really do enjoy this product. So yeah, let's just bronze up my face. Also, this works perfectly on top of powder. Such a lovely shade, really works well for me. It's neutral still, it has a little bit of warmth in it. It blends out like a dream. It can be built up, it's not over the top pigmented. I really never tried out a cream complexion color by Jane Iredale, but this is just beautiful. And I, I honestly, I think this is an amazing, amazing cream bronzer. So if you have the chance to pick this up, don't sleep on this if you like a good cream bronzer fantastic stunning formula so the cream bronzer is applied so let's actually move on to some cream blush so this is the fit glow beauty multi-use ceramide cream lip and cheek palette and this retails for 48 dollars so fit glow has recently released this beautiful palette and when i saw this i was intrigued because do you guys remember these little ones those were the cream products that fit glow used to offer and this was the cream blush in the shade buff. I have to say the finish of this one was a little bit too dewy for me, but it was a lovely sort of cream blush nonetheless. I just really did not like the packaging and I think a lot of people did not like this packaging. So here we have the brand new palette. So you're gonna get four shades in one refillable palette, which is so cool. Also this palette is made from 45,000 plastic bottles that were recycled. I was honestly speechless. 
45,000 plastic bottles to make this palette. So I don't know if they actually used 45,000 plastic bottles for their entire stock or if it's just for one palette only. I am wondering. I'm not sure about this. I honestly thought this was more lightweight, but it's actually a really top quality sort of packaging. And here they are. The beautiful shades. Now at this point in time I've tried out most of these shades apart from this one that I want to use. Uh, I tried out all of these three shades apart from this one. This one we are going to be using for today's video. I kind of want to try this shade. I kind of left it for the video. So I'm going to show you all of the shades. A swatch on my arm and I'm also going to show you these three when I apply them to my face. So this is the shade Watermelon a soft rose, this is the shade sun peach, a soft peach, this is the shade mauve berry, a creamy mauve berry. For today's look I do want to dip into the shade fig and the shade fig looks so pretty, completely up my alley. I can't wait to actually put this on my cheeks now. So I usually use my Ilia brush, my uh, complexion brush. I think this is such a perfect shape just to go onto the apples of my cheeks with this. So I like to heat this one up a little bit because it's a little bit more of a stiffer formula and it's also, it's not that creamy. It's really stiff so you kind of want to warm it up a little bit and I like to dip in my, my brush just a little bit like that and then I like to first tap it off onto my arm and then we can slowly build this one up. I mean they're not over the top pigmented but they definitely do have a little bit of pigment. So let's apply this beautiful shade Feek. So am I loving this color? Yes. Do I like the formula? It is super, super glowy, I've got to say. It's still kind of more dewy than I like, you know? So I'm almost tempted to actually powder this a little bit down already because it's just such a fine line for me to look greasy instead of glowy or luminous. But yeah, all in all, I think this is a really cool release by Fit Glow Beauty. I'm so glad that they changed this packaging and actually made it into a palette and you know have four shades. In terms of formula these remind me a little bit of the Tower 28 tinted balms. Um, they're quite similar in formula I've got to say. You know it's just right here is where this looks very sort of luminous dewy again. I'm just going to use a little bit of this house labs powder. Try and tame that down. Alright you guys, so my cream blush is applied, so let's actually move on to the cream highlighter. This is the Rose Ink Solar Radiance Hydrating Cream Highlighter and this retails for $30. So I'm not sure if this is a brand new release. I feel like this product came out during the summer and this is really a product that I've got to say I was so surprised by it because it's actually really, really stunning. It comes again in this toilet seat packaging. Honestly, it looks like a toilet seat, okay? But it's refillable packaging, so at least you can refill it. Here are the holes to poke through. And yeah, so this is the shade. They actually have five different shades. I picked up the shade Brilliant, which is described as a pearl shade. This is like such a weird texture. This feels like almost like a powder highlighter. This really does not feel like anything like her blush. Her blush formula is so emollient to a point where, you know, it almost does not work with my skin. But this one, it is so different. This feels almost like a cream powder hybrid. But guys, can you see this? This is so stunning for a cream highlighter. It's actually really, really beautiful. I feel like I went a little bit overboard on this side. Honestly, I think this is a really nice cream highlighter. There are not a lot of cream highlighters that I personally love, 
but this is one of them and this is such a good formula. I would say if I put this on the tip of my nose, it does interfere with the foundation underneath it, but that's only on the tip of my nose. It's not on my cheeks or anywhere else on my face. It's literally just the nose. Let's move on to the eyes. I do have a new brow product. I actually have a new brow pencil and a new brown wax and they are by Lawless. So this is the Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil and this retails for $21. And this is the Hold Up Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax and this retails for $21 as well. Now, if you actually buy these two products together, because you can, you can actually purchase them in a bundle. Uh, it's called Brow Duo and it's actually gonna retail for $32. So you actually can save a little bit of money if you get these two products together like I did. This pencil actually comes in five different shades. I have this in the shade Oak. So Oak is actually described as a light to medium neutral brown for platinum, gray and dark blonde hair. But believe me, it works perfect for my eyebrows as well. I feel like I'm taking a little bit longer with such a small sort of pencil than with my item Beauty One, my Brow Chow. So this is definitely much more narrow and it has this oval shape, whereas this one is a lot like thicker and has a triangle shape. So let's fill in this eyebrow first and then you can definitely see what this is doing. So this really does fill in the brows quite beautifully. Also, I feel like the shade is really, really perfect. I'm gonna fill in my brows on this side. I feel like on this side, I do have a little bit more sparse eyebrows than on this side. So yeah, and once we're done with that, I'm gonna apply the brow wax. This is maybe the runner up for my item beauty one. I think this is such a beautiful one. I mean, you can be super precise with this. You can also go in a little bit more than I did, you know, and really, really fill them in. So let's actually move on to this wax. So right off the bat, I've got to say, I prefer the pencil over this product. It's a wax. It's not necessarily a gel to fill in. So this is kind of good if you definitely need some hold. However, I cannot really attest to that because I never really brushed them up. I will just say the one thing that bothered me a little bit about this product was the fact that it did not dry down completely. I kind of felt like this was waxy. It's not something that sets. It's not something that is going to dry down completely, but we're going to apply it nonetheless. I'm not convinced about this you guys I feel like when I apply this it goes on quite patchy it literally feels like your eyebrows are glued onto you know your skin also I should mention this is the shade medium dark they have another shade light to medium all right you guys so my brows are done so let's actually move on to a brand new release a brand new eyeshadow palette so this is by Lisa Aldridge and this is the eyeshadow palette and this retails for $68 yeah so recently I've just done a Lisa Aldridge full face kind of video and I did feature her liquid Lurex eyeshadow formula in that one really loved her liquid eyeshadow so I was really intrigued to see that she came out I think with five different colorways um, six pan palettes initially I really wanted to get the colorway sorcery now it's out of stock so I actually went ahead and got the colorway Vega. Now there are a couple of other sort of colorways that you can pick from. Like this really depends on what you like. So first off, Lisa made the decision to make a packaging like this. This is actually small, much smaller than I actually thought it would be. Here is the palette in the colorway Vega. Now, when I got this, I was like, wait a second. I feel like I have seen this color story in some way already. So I was like, this just honestly, it reminded me, it does not look exactly the same. And the Lisa Aldrich one is much more muted, much more cool toned. There's a lot more gray in it. This is Olivia Palermo. This is Lisa Aldrich. I mean, it just reminded me the idea and everything. Now I've never reviewed this palette on my channel because guess what? There is something in this palette, in this eyeshadow formula that makes my eyes 
burn and that has never happened to me i feel like i have an allergic reaction to this now this is very different though this is much brighter less cool toned a little bit more neutral whereas this is like a lot of gray in it there's also different finishes with these different shades so i'm going to show you them swatched on my arm But I've also have created a look prior to filming this right now. I actually went for the shade Smoke and Mirrors as a base. And then I basically deepened it up with the shade Lamp Black, this seamless true black color. And I topped it off with the shade Supernova, this luminous finish. I will say though, this look did take me quite a while because... These matte shades, they're not as pigmented and as creamy as I thought they would be. And I mean, the look is okay. It's not like my favorite look I've ever created, I've got to be honest with you. So I'm kind of going to go in with this gray shade on my lid and maybe a little bit on my crease and use it somewhat as a transition shade and the base. The base is on, this is French grey. I honestly feel like these are not very pigmented. So you really have to build them up if you want some color payoff. Unless you really like this soft pigmentation. Um, I'm okay as long as it builds up. It is nice in the sense that, you know, it's not patchy or anything. It blends out quite seamlessly. Um, but yeah, I do need quite some product actually to get the color to pop a little bit. Uh, and still it's very subtle, the pigmentation. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the shade Turbulence. And I'm just going to build up, uh, you know, the edges of my crease a little bit. Now the gray was a velvet finish. This one has a matte finish. And it's like a brown, a cool brown shade. I mean, it's not really showing up that much, to be honest. Considering how much I'm putting on my brush, it is not that pigmented, really not. I mean, it's kind of looking airbrushed, but I just feel like the color and the saturation is not really there. You know, it's not patchy or anything. It almost looks like diffused, but it takes quite an effort to get there. You know, a lot of buildup in terms of color. I'm going to continue. I'm actually going to use this Victoria Beckham Satin Kayar Liner in the shade Ash today, which is like kind of a grayish black. And I'm going to put that in my waterline. Okay, so let's actually use the same colors for my lower lash line. So I'm going to go in with that shade French Grey. I don't think this is going to show up that much, uh, you know, but I'm still going to apply it for underneath my eyes. And then I'm going to deepen it up with the shade Turbulence. We are going to continue and I'm just going to use this beautiful shade moon swirl this metallic shade right here and also i do prefer this metallic sort of formula it's a little bit more buttery so i'm just going to go with this shade all over my lids it just feels incomplete so i'm just going to use a little bit of this luminous formula and this is so stunning it's called supernova i really need to get this look somewhere the luminous formula is really where it's at and i'm just going to apply this really into my corner my inner corner here so this luminous shade right here the shade supernova is my favorite one uh, it is just so beautiful on top of this metallic moon swirl it's not really my all-time favorite cool tone palette it's because of the matte formula i feel like the velvets and the mattes if they would just have a little bit more pigment i would be happy but because they are so low pigment and they take so long to build up it's a little bit of a drawback to be honest for me personally 
Uh, I don't know if I would recommend this necessarily. Let me know if you've tried this out and you are loving this. I know she has all of these other color stories. I mean, I like the look that I came up with. It is pretty. It's something that I personally really, really do like in terms of colors. I'm not really sure what to make out of this formula just yet. I just know it's not my favorite one. So my eye look is almost there. It's almost finished, but of course what is missing is the mascara. So this is the Tower 28 Make Waves Lengthening and Volumizing Mascara and this retails for $20. This went viral on the internet and for a good reason. It's actually really really lovely and I've been enjoying it. So here it is. The good thing about this mascara is it's flake free, it's smudge free and it's going to do quite some fantastic things to your lashes. So here is the wand and the brush. So you can see the brush is slightly curved. It has these silicone bristles to it. So I'm always starting like this and then I turn it around and lift it up. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but that's how I'm using it. So yeah, let's apply the mascara. I mean, there you go. This is how much this can be built up. I feel like since this is not brand, brand new, I have this for a couple of weeks. Again, I'm pretty late with this video. Once this formula gets a little bit older, I feel like it's clumping up a little bit, <laughs> not much. And it's not by any means like super clumpy, but I feel like around here is a little bit clumpy. I feel like, you know, the formula does change a little bit and it might just like dry out a little bit too quick. What I really like about this is that this does not crumble off. Really not. It's not flaky or anything, you know, it's just gonna coat your lashes very evenly and I really do enjoy that. Let's actually also apply this to the other eye. Okay, so my lashes are done. I think this is a very pretty effect, to be honest. Um, I just think that the longer you have opened this, you know, the drier it gets. Usually a mascara gets better over time. With this, I feel it's kind of the opposite. I do think that it's a good mascara. Let me know if you've tried this out and if you like this as well. So my eyes are actually done. So let's actually move on to the lips and let's continue with a product by Tower 28. So this is the Tower 28 One Liner Multi Liner and this retails for $15. So not only have they launched this mascara, they also came out with these multi liners. So you could use them on your eyes, you can use them on your lips, or you can use them even on the cheeks, which I have not tried yet. But I actually had picked up the shade Draw Me initially, but I did not really like this shade. This shade for some reason is really warm brown and I thought just by looking at it, it would be a little bit more cool toned or neutral toned, but it's very warm. So I used this in my waterline because I also did not really enjoy this shade on my lips. So I picked up this shade uh, Work of Art and that is such a beautiful shade. That is such a different story. This one is so amazing and I love this for my lips. I love it so much. I actually kind of want to put it everywhere today. And it's just such a beautiful, cool toned, like beigey, browny pink. And I'm just going to use this as a lip color. Look at this shade. Isn't this just made for me? This is so beautiful. It does not look like the pencil though. Just be mindful of that. You know, if you see the pencil itself, it has a little bit of a different color than actually uh, the crayon. This is so fantastic to just put all over your lips, especially because I really do love this color. This is like this beautiful cool toned. It looks brown on my lips. I've got to say like pinky beige brown. Uh, I really do enjoy like a matte satin lip, but we are going to add a lip gloss. I also do love my lip glosses. Now, actually, 
I did pick up quite a lot of lip glosses lately. So I do have some options here. And these are formulas that are no stranger to my channel, but they just added a couple new shades. My first option is the Kosas Lip Oil The Wet Set Undressed Volume 2 and this retails for $25. Or I could apply one of the shades from the Tower 28 Dreamy Gleamy Lip Jelly Duo and I'm really thinking about that shade Dream. I'm gonna show you all of the swatches anyway of these products because these are all kind of like lip products that I've picked up recently. So I did try them out already and I was so curious to try out these new shades by Kosas. I love their wet lip oil formula. It's a little bit more balmy, but it's so nice and it just smells like British shortbread. And when I saw this shade here in particular, exposed, I was just thinking to myself, is this like a golden green, like pinky shimmer? So stunning. They also have the shade Bear, which is kind of like a nectar peachier brown shade. We also have the shade Revealed and this is like a pinky shade. I can only like use one of them but I do want to show you all three of them. And then I also have this Tower 28 shade, this shade Dream. And I am so torn right now because I kind of want to go in with the Tower 28 or with this. But I think I'm going to go in with this and I'm going to show you the Tower 28 on my lips, but I'm gonna use this in the shade Exposed. This is not like a jelly, cushiony lip gloss formula. It's even called lip oil. Now I don't feel like it's oily in any way. I feel like this is uh, almost like a hybrid in between a lip gloss and a lip balm. It's really nourishing to the lips. So when I applied this, it really gave me like a lot of the pink shimmer. But once it's like, you know, blended out, it looks so nice in combination with this lip liner. I really, really do enjoy this little trio by Kosas. And I do think these would make a really great sort of like holiday present. All right, you guys. So this is pretty much it. These are all of the new products that I've tried out over the fall. Now, I did try out a couple more products, so just make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and have that bell notification on because there is a lot of like new full faces that I do on a film. I just don't know how long it's going to take me. But yeah, there are definitely some other releases that I could not put in today's video that I definitely do want to mention in the future. So just have an eye out for my new videos. And please do let me know in the comment section down below what have you tried out this season. And also while you're down there, why not give this video a big thumbs up in case you enjoyed this in case you found this kind of like review helpful. But yeah, I shall be seeing you on here very, very soon with the next review because I do have so much more makeup and so much more skincare to review. So just stay tuned on this channel. And until then, please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.